Hello, hello, hello! I know I said I would be doing a chronic illness video, generally an IVF video, every Sunday, and I still am, but last Friday, no, last Thursday, sorry, we had our second IVF appointment, and I, even though I was expecting the news that we got, I was 70% 70, 70 expecting the news that we got, I um, basically had to take the weekend to digest the news, which therefore meant this video is coming a week late. But um, I'm okay with that, and I think this might just be how it's going to have to roll. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's get on to the topic. So. As I said, last Thursday we had to go to our second IVF appointment, the third time we've been in the Halifax hospital and um, the first time we went in we went up to, we went to lift three and we couldn't remember what level we went to. So we went in and we um, got lost basically. We ended up on level three and um, we had to ask um, a lady who was walking somewhere, who obviously works there, um, where it was and she didn't know, she didn't even know that the hospital did fertility treatments. She said she'd been to Leeds to get hers done. But I thought it was nice to bump into somebody who had done that as well. Anyway, so she took us to an office and they told us to go further down the corridor and then it was left so that's what we did. They told us we were completely in the wrong place and that it was on level two and you had to walk through x-ray to get there. So down we went to level two only there was no x-ray it was the woman, women's and children's wards I think and so we popped our head into one of the rooms and we asked there again. So we've already been given directions wrong twice. And um, we had basically bumped into this really nice nurse who'd done fertility in Halifax as well and she took us down and we got there really late. So we spent about 25 minutes lost, just wandering around getting sent in the wrong direction and waiting for elevators. So when we finally got into our appointment, because obviously they then had to squeeze us in between other people's appointments because we were late, although I did ring them and apologise and say we got lost, and then she said we had to find lift five, but then finding lift five was just no. So when we finally got in to see our doctor, we are seeing Dr. De Bono, and um, that didn't go great either because we got in and he couldn't log on to his computer because he was in a different room to find out the results of um, my and my husband's sample. So we started talking about stuff and then we had to move offices um, so he could get back onto his computer. Um, and Ryan's sample was perfectly normal. That's all we got. <laughs> so you know, fair enough, perfectly normal. Um, then we discussed um, the next steps and obviously because of my situation um, it made things a bit more problematic or a bit more difficult. Um, but basically we went into this appointment wanting to find out whether or not I was supposed to be coming off the pro strap and getting tested for ovulation which is exactly what the appointment was about. Um, so I am coming off my pro strap injection, I am no longer going to be doing the HRT either with it and I will be having periods again. I have to go back um, on my second period on days between days one and three to Halifax. We have to go up to the fertility clinic again get all the information and then go down to the blood test people and then wait around and blood test people while I'm on either day one, two or three of my period it's going to be awful. 
and do not have nice periods no matter what I do pre-surgery post-surgery young old whatever I do not have good periods um, so I'm not really looking forward to that um, we will be getting tested for two blood tests and I cannot remember the name of the tests the first one is the standard one that everyone does and the second one is the paid for version that costs £60 and because um, obviously I had surgery and I had a cyst on my left ovary and they've had to remove it he's concerned about the condition of my ovaries um, because I had a cyst on one ovary and that got removed and then I've got a cyst on another ovary and that's still there so we're going to be paying for this more detailed test to get um, better results so fingers crossed that it's worth this. Um, it's not the blood test that a problem. I don't have a problem with needles. It is just that I see I've been prodded and poked by all the needles. And like I said, I have really bad periods and the first five days are the worst generally for me. And for us to actually have to travel and have to see people and yeah I'm just kind of dreading it to be honest especially because it's going to be the second period not the first period and I think the first period would be a lot lighter and easier to handle but oh well so that means our next appointment probably won't be until November which is actually when we go and do the blood tests so that's kind of a big gap and I think I might do a separate video on about dealing with that gap and realisation of we won't be getting pregnant this year. Um, so what's next in this video series? Well I think I'm just going to keep going for the moment with chronic illness related videos on a Sunday and probably IVF related ones as well. Um, just because I like sharing it and um, I'm hoping people are enjoying watching them and finding them interesting but yeah I'm kind of a bit bummed out because otherwise there would be nothing going on until November now when we would just do the blood tests and then it's six weeks after the blood tests before we get an appointment um, so we maybe won't get an appointment till December or if we're really unlucky January 2018 so that's a really big gap um so that's why I'm thinking of just continuing doing other videos that are more chronic re illness related and IVF related I still have that dare to dream book to talk about like I said I was going to talk about the gap and realising that we're not going to get pregnant this year or even be able to try to get pregnant this year um, so I do have some other content to talk about and I do want to talk about other chronic illness related subjects like I wanted to do a video series on living with endometriosis and you know dealing with nausea and things like that so hopefully that is what's going to happen with the rest of these episodes